Here's another terminology mind map exercise. It's an exercise. I'll guide you through it. You do it. You do it with pen and paper or a mind map app. Take you maybe five or 10 minutes. Let's jump in. So here's the phase one job. You start with the seed term TCPIP in this case. And I want you to think of all the terms that you remember from watching those three videos related to chapter one. So when you think of a term, write down the term. When you think of an idea but not a term, write down a description of the idea and just make a list. Two minutes, maybe three at the most. And I give you that little bit of extra time because it's for a whole chapter's worth of content, so there might be more terms to write down. But two or three minutes at most, you can hit the pause button and go do that right now. Next, on the back or on another piece of paper, create a mind map. Now, what do you do? You take that same TCPIP C term and you just take the list you already made and organize it. So any terms you see that should go together, put them together. Another set of terms that go together but not with the first set, put them somewhere else. Terms that you don't really know how to categorize them, spread them around your page. All right, you got five seconds, hit pause and go do that next. Now, you should be done with the exercise at this point, but if you'd like to check what I would put in there, I've got two lists for you here because this is a full chapter terminology mind map. First off, the end of each chapter in the books, they have a list of key terms that are truly the most important terms in the chapter, and here's the list from volume one. It's not really all that long a list, but honestly, they're the most important terms, so I would hope that your terminology mind map, you thought of these ideas at least, if not the actual terms, so if you want to hit pause and go update your terminology mind map with these, or maybe also the names of the TCPIP layers, that would be great. Now, because it's a full chapter, and I really did use a lot of terminology in those three videos, I've included a list of all the terminology that I think I used in those videos. So here you go. It's a much longer list. It's alphabetized for easy reference, but it's a lot of terms. So if you want to hit pause here, and go update your terminology mind map. But let me emphasize, I'm not worried about you remembering all these terms at this point. It's just there for reference, and I'm going to use these in my walkthrough here in just a moment. So here's a mind map where I'll cover all the most important terms as listed in the back of that chapter one of the official cert guide, plus the names of the TCPIP layers. All right, so first off, the term networking model was included. So TCPIP is one example of a networking model. It's the most popular one today. So that's this item up there at the upper right. And then the TCPIP model itself, of course, has application transport, network data link, and physical layers that you see there on the bottom right. So continuing around the dial, if you will, encapsulation terms, we talked about encapsulation and de-encapsulation. Encapsulation is taking data and adding a header and or header plus trailer to data. And then de-encapsulation is the process where you're removing data from its headers as you process as it goes up the stack. We also talked about those related terms, adjacent layer interaction and same layer interaction. Adjacent layer meaning as you move down or up the stack, the adjacent layers work with each other. And as you think about two opposite hosts that are communicating, it's the same layer's header that communicates data for them to do their job. And then finally, we had some terminology for those messages. And again, not everyone uses the terms this way, but most commonly in a Cisco context, you'll hear the term frame for the data link layer message, packet for the network layer message, and segment for the transport layer message. Now let me show you a much bigger mind map with all those terms. Again, I'm not worried about whether you remembered them. I don't want you to see this big, long list of terms and now go spend two hours trying to find definitions for them. Don't do that. You're going to see them as you move through CCNA. What's the goal here? To exercise your brain, remember the ones you can remember now, remind yourself of what you think they mean by virtue of this exercise, and move on. All right? Short exercise. But just to show you what I came up with here, the TCPIP model, of course, we've got those same names. We mentioned some protocol terms like header and trailer, of course, IP address and IP version 4. 
we had the terms routing and switching, and I didn't really know what to label to put on them for categorizing, so I just called it a list, right? If you don't know what to put down, put an X, right? Um, just fill in things. Just say, hey, I'm working through it. Here's what I do remember. It doesn't matter if I don't remember some things, all right? We had a few data link and physical layer terms, like for Ethernet, we talked about RJ45 and Twisted Pair, and we talked about Wi-Fi, or at least I think I talked about Wi-Fi somewhere along the way there. Now, what's TCPIP defined by? Well, it's defined by standards and protocols, and the protocols for TCPIP are defined in documents called a request for comment or an RFC. Moving around the dial clockwise still, encapsulation, we had some terms. We saw those in that previous mind map, right? Encapsulation, de-encapsulation, adjacent layer interaction, same layer interaction, and header and trailer, which I organized somewhere else in that previous mind map. Again, it's whatever makes sense to you right now, makes your brain reorganize and exercise those connectors in your brain, which is useful for remembering all this stuff. The messages, we talked about those in the previous mind map, frame, packet, segment, and also here's a reminder of that more generic term, protocol, data unit, or PDU. Now, TCPIP is a networking model, but somewhere along the way we also mentioned OSI, so there's another example of a networking model. And then two layers, transport and application, we mentioned TCP and UDP as the main protocols at the transport layer, and one of its main features for each of those was to define port numbers, which identified applications by number running on a computer. And then finally, at the application layer, I emphasize, hey, these are just examples, but a few that we mentioned were HTTP and HTTPS for web browsing, POP3 for retrieving email, and RTP for voice calls. So that's an example of how I organized it having had some experience with networking, just exercise your brain and think of some of these and organize it for yourself. Hope you enjoyed that exercise. It really does help your brain remember things. If you click on the left, you'll get to the next new topic, the first topic related to Chapter 2. And on the right, if you've already done Chapter 2, you can jump ahead to the first topic in Chapter 3. Hey, thanks for hanging out. I'll talk to you soon.